Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Dead Kids, a Filipino dramatic thriller from 2019 that was directed by Mikhail Red. Now, Red also recently directed Birdshot and Eerie, both of which I previously reviewed on my channel. So check out those reviews if you're interested in this director or recent Filipino cinema at all. Now, our lead protagonist in this film is a high school student by the name of Mark Santamaria. He gets good grades and has a crush on a fellow classmate, but he also must deal with the pressures of life that are intensified by the fact that he lives alone and is expected to somehow find enough money to pay rent. And this guy's a high school student. And on top of all this, a big time jerk at school bullies people without any repercussions against him because his father is a known drug lord and has a lot of money. Well, Mark and some of his peers decide to kidnap this bully at school and obtain a ransom from his drug lord father. And things go from there. So there's a very strong social class theme to this movie, and it's a theme that we've seen in some high-profile films in recent years from multiple countries. Now, Dead Kids is not as masterful or insightful as something like Parasite or Shoplifters, but it is a good movie that executes its social class themes well enough. You know, the film opens with a song about no money, no honey, and uh, it shows some prostitutes waiting for their clients at a dodgy uh, massage parlor. And this immediately just sets up the theme right from the start. And throughout the film, we get these ele elements that resurface, like, you know, Mark having problems with his phone service at times because he doesn't, doesn't have a lot of money. And uh, the bully has thousands, like tens of thousands of followers on social media because he's cool and he hangs out at all like the, the high-end, like, hip places. So even the title of the film, Dead Kids, is a label that some of the students use to put down other students that are like on the low end of the, of the financial totem pole, so to speak. There's also some commentary on poor parental supervision, for sure. I mean, there's practically no parental influence in this film at all. I mean, I mentioned earlier that Mark lives alone and has financial pressures that pile on top of, you know, the normal pressures that a typical high school kid would have. I mean, at the very least, his parents should be providing financial stability, and on top of that, they should be uh, some type of provide some type of a guiding hand in his life. But that's not the case here at all. Even the bully, who is pretty well off financially, you know, he's got uh, daddy issues as well. I mean, he even says he has daddy issues at the beginning of the film. You know, it's not just because his dad's dad is a drug lord, but because he's He's pretty inconsiderate regarding his his day-to-day -day affairs, you know what I'm saying? So, everybody's got parental problems in this flick. <clears throat> but I think the greatest strength of this film is the interaction between the characters. It comes off as very convincing, I think. You could probably criticize some of the characters for being, like, surface level and not especially complex, but the realistic interaction is still there, and I think that's a really strong point, like, positive element to this film. Now, in regard to, like, the thriller elements, like the kidnap elements, the kidnapping scene, I think, also comes off as pretty realistic. You know, it's genuine and, and intense in spots. There are a few suspenseful and impactful moments as well. The actors do a really good job, I think, acting out and reacting to, like, the most uh, eventful moments in the film. Like, there's a scene later on, no spoilers, but there's a scene later on in a nightclub. And uh, there's, like, a whole sequence there. And... The characters react to what happens in that scene, I think, pretty realistically. That's how most people, I think, would react to a scene like that, at least immediately upon being confronted with it. So I like that. I really like that scene in the film, and I think the actors did a good job. And since this is a Mikhail Red film, it's very nicely shot and directed. But if I were to rank the three films that I've seen from this director, I would say Eerie is on the bottom. It's number three. It's watchable, but kind of disappointing in terms of content. Then Dead Boys would be number two. I think it's a legit good movie. And then Birdshot would be number one by a good margin. I think Birdshot is just awesome. If you haven't seen Birdshot, I think it's a must-see. It's really, really entertaining and, and uh, high-quality stuff. And all three of these movies are available on Netflix in the United States. So you could catch up on some of uh, Red's recent portfolio. He released an, a few other films in recent years that are not available in the U.S. yet. 
But I ho- I'm hoping they get get some releases because this guy's a good director. You know, he has yet, I think, to to recapture his birdshot greatness, but he's he's uh, he's certainly capable. Let's put it that way. So I recommend Dead Kids. It's a good flick, and I will be reviewing a, a Japanese film about uh, high school kids in the next few days that I think is even better than this one. So look out for that. And as always, I'll see you next time.